You are listening to the Icehouse Podcast, hosting conversations with gritty Kiwi business owners and leaders and industry leading minds. Welcome everybody to 2023. We've made it to the new year. I am Briar Stewart, the community manager here at the Ice House, and I'm really excited to bring another year of absolute gold through this weekly podcast, conversations with our alumni and our business community. This conversation is with Angus and Cam. They are the co-founders of the Flatpak Company, New Zealand's home of comfortable and affordable beds for flatters, first home buyers, and students. This conversation is packed with good Okay, that is a pun, but I'm rolling with it. Packed with goodness. They talk about what their life looks like now and also how they're expanding into the USA this year. So what life will look like in 2023. They talk about how they started this business from university in Otago and they've grown it to what it is now. They have four full-time employees with more coming in this year. Um, The highs, the lows, the learnings, the advice that they have for other young business owners uh, is really, really great and I know you're going to love it. So let's jump into the conversation now. I like to start with some quick fire, so we're going to jump into that. First things first, uh, Angus, let's start with you. When are you most relaxed? Um, great question. Um, Cam and I both love surfing, mm-hmm. um, so I can already tell you what Cam's <laughs> going to say, but for me, um, one of the big reasons we chose the mount was the lifestyle, mm-hmm. um, and I love just going for a, a beach walk in the morning, up the mount, um, either sunrise or sunset is a, is a really uh, peaceful time for me, outside of the, the noise of the, of the busy day. So yeah, love the mount, and that's why we're here. Awesome, love that. What does a day in the life of Angus look like? Um, well, I'd love to say get up and go to the gym every morning. Um, <laughs> yeah, I will be honest. Um, I go to the gym probably three times a week in the morning. Um, the other two, the other two sort of later on in the week, I'll just get up and go for a walk or whatever. Awesome. Um, chuck in a podcast, chuck in a, um, big on audible, um, audio books. I've sort of put the, put the hard covers down, hard copies down for, for now. Um, and just sort of relax in the morning and, and do a bit of exercise if I can before the day. Awesome. So good. And on that note, book or podcast you recommend? Um, yeah, big one at the moment, Principles by Ray Dalio. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ray Dalio, CEO, uh, was the CEO of um, Bridgewater. Um, he built the biggest hedge fund in the world, um, fifth most powerful company in the, U- in the US. Um, and he's written this book called Principles, which is it's a great take on how to be successful at anything. Mm-hmm. So it's really, um, you know, you, he says it doesn't matter if you want to be a couch potato or you want to be the CEO <laughs> of the, you know, the biggest company in the world. <laughs> this is sort of the framework that you need to achieve that. And to be the best, also. Awesome. To be the best. Yeah. So yeah, Principles by Ray Dalio. So good. And favorite productivity app or tool? Um, Notion. Uh, Ooh, yeah. hands down notion um, it's really helped us in, in our business sort of um, centralize a lot of things um, but also helped become a lot more productive um, we've moved away from the old you know Google Drive where you've got sort of um, isolated sheets everywhere or isolated docs everywhere mm-hmm. and moved into notion where you've got that control panel down the left and you can sort of your flow is a lot better um, so yeah notion would be mine that's good that's good and what excites you most about 2023 oh uh, 2023 uh, we'll get into this a little bit more soon <laughs> yeah. but can Cam and I are off to the States, taking the business over to the US. It's something that um, we wanted to do for a long time um, and sort of come out of that COVID period. Um, you know, we've sort of got a lot more stability in business now and it's sort of time to time to put the put the foot down and, and see what we can do overseas. So that's that's the most exciting thing for us on the horizon. Exciting. Watch the space. That's very cool. Yes, cool. We'll you. unpack that more very quickly. Sounds good. Sure. Looking forward to it. Cam, it's your turn. Um, when are you most relaxed? Oh, I feel like Gus has, has just answered everything for me. He's done the thunder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, first I got to start. Yeah, yeah. As, as Gus mentioned, I'm a massive surfer, so cool. I'm sort of most relaxed out the back, um, <laughs> waiting for a bomb set. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> what does a day in the life of Cam look like? I yeah, usually get up around sort of 5.30. Uh, again, probably don't go to the gym every single day of the week, but sort of probably three or four times. Try and get out for a surf in the morning as well during summer. Uh, it's a bit, a bit tough in winter, you know, and oh, sort yeah. of the sun rises about 7.30 and Gus yeah. is expecting, expecting me in the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I yeah, just love surfing. Yeah, so. so cool. Book or podcast you recommend? Uh, I'm actually going to a podcast at the moment called Huberman Lab. Mm, it's uh, it. yeah, super interesting, sort of around health and mindset. Cool. Um, so things like dopamine release um talks about caffeine and just a whole bunch of stuff um it's yeah it's yeah. just awesome to like understand the chemistry behind what's going on so um, good. more so around neuroscience and, and that sort of stuff yeah. cam actually uh did an ice bath in the weekend didn't you oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's my first
first in my first ice bath. So what do you think? That was that was awesome. Yeah, wow. Really cool. Okay. I'd nice. highly I'd highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, nice. Just yeah, I think in understanding what's really going on, you know, yeah. around building resilience and wow. that sort of stuff was yeah. You did the whole like break the ice. Yeah, like on yeah. the top sort of thing. That's right. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's hardcore. Nice. I like it. Um, favorite productivity apple to tool is it Notion? Yeah, it was just yeah. Notion. We've just migrated maybe two months ago. Yeah. While we're in the US, we actually made the decision to migrate. Yeah. And it's yeah. It's just, was it big over there? Um. Or not, too sure. not too sure. We got recommended it by a uh, mate we have in Aussie. Yeah. Um, who's just migrated, and yes. Yeah, it's like just next level like yeah. game changer okay I have to look at it yeah it up. this is awesome and what about you for 2023 what excites you um probably move to the US yeah, yeah. cool yeah nice. super exciting I've already um, got like a million questions yeah, yeah. Like, are yeah. you guys physically moving to the US yeah. yes here we are wow. we're off first of Feb flights are booked all right we'll be on our way to, to Kansas of all places wow guys this yeah. is cool oh my gosh well what an honor being able to sit here and catch you guys before you got <laughs> yeah no, thank that's you. amazing I Tell us just a little bit about your guys' relationship sure. and how it all started. Like, how did, what's yeah. the story behind the flat pack code? Sounds good. So, Cam and I both studied at Otago University, yeah. um, both uh, commerce, I was a finance major, um, Cam was an accounting major. And we were in, actually in the same halls of residence in our first year. So, you know, like, we're, like we were in Cumberland College, um, accommodation provided by the university. Um, and we were actually two doors down from each other. And Cam and I used to sit up at like midnight, you know, till one o'clock, maybe even two o'clock in the morning, didn't we? And talk about um, starting a business or starting a, at least a little project on yeah. the side sort of thing. And we're sort of racking our brains, you know, what to do. There was nothing, you know, small things would come and go, of course. Yeah. Um, but nothing really came along until the end of the year um, when this whole bed um, idea came into came into play. So that was sort of the start of our relationship, really. Yeah. Um, and yeah, met, met at, at university. Yeah. So cool. I guess leading on from there, how we sort of started the business was we were both moving out of halls into our first house or flat uh, yeah. down in Dunedin. Yeah. Um, and we went through the process of sort of looking to purchase a second-hand bed mm-hmm. and the nightmare around that. Um, we didn't have a car, let alone a trailer. We were in the middle of exams. So it was just, it just felt like a nightmare. Yeah. So what we actually ended up doing is we bought 30 second-hand beds um, and sold them to all of our mates and delivered them on the same day they moved into their house uh, the following year or their flat. Um, and it's sort of, that's really how it, how it kicked off. Um, we actually... We sold the beds before we purchased them. Uh, we didn't have any cash to start the business, so yeah. that was sort of the, the first round of funds. <laughs> and then from there, we very quickly realized that um, secondhand beds aren't scalable. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's huge issues around quality control yeah. and the fact that they're sort of big, bulky items. So we looked down the route of importing product out of Asia uh, and came across these sort of flat pack mattresses, like mattress in a box, mm-hmm. and then flat pack bed frames, and yeah, very quickly began sort of selling them into Dunedin and then expanded to Christchurch, Wellington and Auckland. Yeah. Wow. Um, and yeah, she's been all go for the last four years. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of um, funny stories from the early days. Yeah. Um, yeah, when we that's had, what we want. Yeah. When we had, um, Cam mentioned before, we pr- we sold the beds before we bought them. Yes. So what that actually means is we posted on Facebook, on, our, on the university Facebook pages saying, hey, look, you know, we're going through this issue as well. We're students as well. Um, we know everyone needs a bed for their flat. No one has a car. No one has a trailer. So for two hundred bucks, um, transfer this bank account number, and it was just this most bootleg post, you know, on Facebook you can imagine. <laughs> and we will guarantee, you know, whatever that meant at the time, and as, as a couple of eighteen-year-olds, <laughs> that we will deliver uh, a, bra- a second-hand mattress and bed frame to your flat on the day that you move in, mm-hmm. and sort of very naively, you know, sent this message out into the University of Otago abyss and started having all these the, these uh, bank transfers coming into our account from sort of people that we didn't know. Um, and we were sort of, you know, taking the money and it would have their name, luckily, as a reference and they were like texting us saying, hey, look, I've just transferred, looking forward to getting my bed next year. Um, and without, you know, any beds in our custody um, or any idea of how we were going to do it, we sort of had to go, oh, look, you know, we, we're sold out, we're sold out. Um, once we hit 30 beds yeah. and then we went out and just like door knocked and bought, or we bought everything we could off Facebook and trade me and that was like 20, 
Yeah. And then we just went in and door knocked on all like the graduating students' flats, like you know, Brilliant. sort of like you know, Castle Street sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and we ended up buying ten other beds, put them in a shipping container. Cam and I came down to Otago the following year, a few days early. Um, we had this 1990 Toyota Corona. It was the only vehicle we had. Um, 900 bucks. 900 bucks we got it for. Oh my and gosh. without, you know, we didn't have, we were trying to save as much money as we could. Yeah. We didn't have any money to spend. We didn't yeah, have yeah. any money. <laughs> yeah. At the time, yeah, this was, it, this was like our summer project. Yeah. And the yeah. whole thing was Cam and I didn't, and Cam and I didn't want to get summer jobs like everyone else. Yeah. So we just sort of th- thought we'd sell 30 beds and that would get us through summer to the next year, which it did. But we're now at the end of the year, we've kind of spent all the money you know like we're yeah. sort of on back on like the student budget and so without so without uh, hiring a trailer or buying any strops or anything like that we just stacked the mattresses up on top of this toyota corona and drove up and down castle street handing these beds out as everyone arrived and everyone saw us doing it saw the car driving around and we very beca- quickly became the bed guys actually, yeah, yeah. The, bed, the bed boys the, yeah, the, the bed, bed bros yeah the yeah. bed bros was actually yeah. going to be the name of the flat pack company yeah. early days yeah. so so lucky we didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah guys guys <laughs> yeah. so anyway this sort of went from second hand beds doing that to then what Cam was talking about before going into brand new beds out of Asia so and that's how we've been able to scale um, is everything's been focused on brand new products wow so yeah that was kind of the early days in the story yeah sure. those that can't see my face um, <laughs> I'm kind of in shock but like it's really cool because you guys are obviously very entrepreneurial mm. um, where do you think that entrepreneurial I'm going completely off script yeah yeah where do you think that entrepreneurial um, spirit comes um, yeah my parents are both from sort of rural backgrounds yeah uh, but have done things a little bit alternatively so have set up a few businesses within the agricultural sector mm-hmm. um, which are I guess entrepreneurial in, yeah, in a way. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Set up a big calf rearing operation. So do between sort of eight and nine thousand calves a year. Wow. Um, so rear calves from like four kilos through to hundred kilos. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, four days old or four yeah. kilos. Um, and yeah, that's probably where my yeah. entrepreneurial spirit has come from. Yeah, totally. Cam's family was actually on country calendar. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's my plan to yeah. Yeah. Before this, yeah. before this, that was my yeah. Did you make a feature? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Check that out. That's yeah. cool. We might have to put a link in there. <laughs> yeah. <somewhere. laughs> oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. That, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, I totally understand that like entrepreneurial thing coming through the family. What about mm. you? Yeah, um, similar ish, um, not as agricultural, but um, sort of semi rural growing up mm-hmm. um, my mum sort of has her own business beauty therapy business cool. uh, my dad's sort of uh, on the entrepreneurial side of stuff um, he uh, kind of guided my brother and I to start a business in high school mm-hmm. um, selling uh, luxury possum fur products to, in the tourist market of New Zealand yeah. um, and so we had we were selling stuff in a few Queenstown shops and Christchurch and sort of driving up in between the places delivering product and sort of mm-hmm. pitching you know uh, the new cushion of the <laughs> season you know sort of thing yeah, yeah. Um, with dad's help so yeah so it was quite entrepreneurial growing up as well totally yeah you guys aren't afraid of risk it seems you know obviously everyone is to a, a, to mm. a point mm. but you guys have a high risk tolerance and others I, around you i think the way we sort of look at it is we're so young we've got no responsibility yeah. outside of business you know we've got no kids or yeah. no, yeah, no one to support yeah um so you know if in five years we lose it all like what have we lost yeah, yeah. five yeah. years that we've learned a lot along the way yeah. and we're in a great position to do it all again so yeah, that's yeah. That's, I think that's the way we it is yeah. and I feel like we're both quite acutely aware of that for some reason and mm-hmm. we, we talk probably just we talk about it quite a lot and we've talked about it since day one and that sort of I guess leads into this US thing as well um, now that we've set up at every university in New Zealand um, you know we've had some success there we've done um, just over 4,000 uh, mattresses and 4,000 bed frames to students over the last um, what, three years four years um, four years um, which is pretty cool wow. um, and now we're sort of gone we've got the formula here in New Zealand and it's time to go to the US mm. um, and that's a, a common question um, that comes up you know what are the risks with going to the US well for us it's like you know we could go over to the US and you know burn a couple hundred thousand dollars but mm. and it doesn't work but come back and what we're 23 24 yeah. um, still with New Zealand business you know it's kind of like what's, yeah. the, what's there to lose really? as long as the yeah. New Zealand business can fund the US growth yeah. or expansion that's yeah, it's yeah. fine not, and not burn it out or burn it to death, to death. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah guys this is awesome I'm like yes yeah, <laughs> yeah you've yeah. got to do it you've yeah, got to yeah. do it while you're young yeah, yeah. it's yeah. so cool I love hearing these stories yeah um 
What's that sense of purpose behind what you guys do, or what motivates you to get out of bed every morning? <laughs> I think we've sort of come to a new sort of motivation, eh? Like, yeah. the way Gus and I now look at our lives in general, not just business, is just pushing the ceiling, our personal ceiling, as high as we can go. Mm. And that's, you know, that does fall within business, as in being the best manager we can be, mm. uh, but it falls within lifestyle as well, yeah. as in being the, as, as healthy as we can be. and as mindful and you know it's sort of across a whole bunch of well our whole mm. life really yeah it's so i think mm. in yeah. the most simple way possible it's about pushing what well, gets me out of bed is about pushing that ceiling up as high as it can be and to be the most the happiest and, and most friendly person mm. i can be and um yeah just like maybe also the growth the yeah. growth mindset yeah yeah so something good. that we've done recently actually is um Cam and I sat down individually and um, laid out what our goals are, what we want to get out of the next five years. And that's we, we both had the same parameters to work through. So um, financial, personal, lifestyle, um, you know, what social, social travel, mm. family. Awesome. Um, what, what type of lifestyle do you want to support in 10 years time? Okay. Um, you know, your relationships, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, and we actually sat down individually. We got out, Cam and I both in sort of, um, really strong relationships got our partners to sit down and do the same thing um, and then we came together um, and well, as a as a pair and then uh, sorry as a, as a couple mm-hmm. and then came together as a four yeah. and sort of laid out what the next four or five, five years is going to look like so that we can um, have everything on the table and support each person and what they want to achieve mm-hmm. and I think that's has really like laid out a, a clear pathway for for the lifestyle thing for the th- yeah. things so that not everyone is so focused on like the top line and, and the bottom line as well and just really business business focused yeah um and that's what is getting out of getting out both of us out of bed yeah. in the morning is um yeah so it's not no longer just about business it's about yeah. like what what are we supporting here to understand that it's just part of just part of our life you know and i think the decision to move to mount Monganui rather than the likes of auckland yeah is sort of a testament to that like we both really value lifestyle yeah. as well as business and yeah. business is sort of the driver um to to lifestyle in a way mm-hmm. so that's yeah. the way we're sort of looking at it. Very, very cool. Yeah, we feel like if we can... We've been so focused on business for the last three years. It's like it's encapsulated everything that we've done and sort of, I guess, seen the success of that. And we want to continue on that path. We don't want to stunt the growth of, you know, an exit or the mm-hmm. or whatever is on the table in, you know, five years' time. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want to tick that box of, you know, like a healthy lifestyle as well. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so cool. Do you have someone... Like, that's really... I feel silly saying this because I'm probably like slightly, just like just slightly older than you, but there's really much mature for you guys to say, like, um, right beyond your years. Do you guys have um, someone leading and guiding you, like mentors, or or is it just you guys bouncing off each other? We uh, we don't have anyone like specific that we can say that's you know who's driving it. Yeah, A lot yeah. of this has come from Cam and I. Cool. There's two things um, really that have sort of come into play. The first one's actually Principles by Ray Dalio, the yeah. book that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's sort a, of, it's a banger. It's a, is it? Uh, yeah, honestly, could, like, both of us couldn't, <laughs> re- couldn't recommend it higher. Yeah. Um, it's really about the whole principles thing is getting your principles clear. Like mm. what, and then when you uh, approach a problem, like it can be as big as what do those next five years look like? Or it can be as small as, you know, what, what's this challenge that we're facing in business that we need to solve this afternoon? Mm. Um, if you've got your yeah. principles clear, then you already know how to answer the question or you know the framework that you're going to answer the question in. Yeah. So getting that down has, has been really important for us. Um, we also have um, we've been doing um, co- having coaching from Kevin which is great for the business side and really um, learning how not to stunt that projection that we're talking about mm-hmm. um, but there's a third person in the mix as well um, a consultant here and based in, in, in Tauranga and, and based in the Mount um, that's been helping us as well with really fitting all those pieces together awesome. um, that's been probably driving that yeah he's, he's been awesome yeah um, cool yeah, we've been working with them for four or five months now. Oh, awesome. We started working with them sort of on business and it's progressed into like the lifestyle and mm-hmm. what we actually want, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's just been, yeah, it's just like sort of flicked a switch mm-hmm. as to the way we look at things. And I think between that and this book and, you know, just a bunch of other things, it's like really changed mm-hmm. just 
mm. changed our outlook on, on everything. Yeah. You guys are buzzing, eh? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. excited. Yeah, super excited. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're really inspired. Like, you know, I'm like, I'm the slum into summer, and now yeah. I'm like, getting re, re excited yeah. for 2023. Yeah. It's very, very yeah. cool. I think having both of us as well, like, yes. we've bounced off each other. We've learned to, or we've built a really strong relationship. We're both very different people. Mm. Um, and we've actually just done a personality test, just done the Myers Briggs cool. with, with the team as well, um, which was super interesting. Yeah. But I think being so different uh, it sort of works in our favor yeah um, yeah we just got so we've just hired um our fourth full-time employee Amazing. so there's four of us um four six of us in the office at the moment um four of us are going over to the u.s um and so leaving two and then we'll actually employ one more person here in the mountain in the new zealand office cool um so what we got we got the all, all six of us to do the myers-briggs personality test mm-hmm. um and we could see the different intricacies of each person mm-hmm. and uh, what can was sort of mentioning before is one of the funniest things is they you do the 16 four by four grid um and it sort of pins you on um extrovertedness you know uh, empathy uh, analytical thinking etc cetera, etc cetera. And Cam and I on sort of the on the scale are actually on opposite ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, come yeah. opposite, top left and top bottom left right. and on bottom right, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. Um, and then it gives you um, that there's a business version of Myers Briggs um, that gives you insights into who works well together on what and ha- who should collab on things and, and that sort of thing. And, and it, it was obvious when we were reading. We we're like, oh, you know, there's a lot of R moments, yeah, classic, R classic, moments. but. It is a, I guess, a testament to how Cam and I work, and um, we bounce off each other really nicely. Yeah, it's probably taken us four years though to figure it out. You know. Mm, yeah. Well, sure. that was one of my questions. Yeah. Is, mm-hmm. is you know, there's well, not always, but there's a journey involved in getting to work well yeah. together. Mm-hmm. What does that journey look like for you guys? If you're saying it's taken four years, you know, I'm sure yeah. it's been highs and lows in that. I mean, in this, like early days, we were both at university. We mm-hmm. never lived together, which I think was was <laughs> like a great thing. A good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 totally. Um, but I guess, yeah, early days, like we spent two years or two and a half years building the business from our Dunedin flats, mm-hmm. which, was, which was cool. And then I graduated six months before Gus um, and came up here. Mm-hmm. And I think that was also like quite a big move being away from each other and like learning to work virtually, yeah. which wasn't wasn't easy by any means. No. Mm-hmm. But then when Gus moved up here to the Mount, I think it was just like a, yeah. that was that was it really. Yeah, like yeah. We were both so focused on what we were trying to do and build and achieve. And I think at that point we learned to, you know, we really learned to work together. Like mm-hmm. we were in an office eight or ten hours a day together like every day yeah. and you yeah, have learned to sort of switch off too like we can go out for a beer after work and like just leave work at awesome. work that's such a good skill yeah. what yeah. are you guys different roles so there's two, two really two sides to our business yeah. um, so one's the we call it the the student market which is what we were already talking about yeah. selling mattresses and bed frame combos that's sort of like the bread and butter to university students moving into houses or apartments mm. and that's what we're taking to the US as well um, yeah. And but there's been this uh, big other expansion that we've had um, in the business and we call it the regular market mm-hmm. and this is a really like e-commerce focused business so um, it's like a, it's very heavy on supply chain um, there's containers coming in all the time um, and products going out every single day Mm -hmm. and cam looks after that side and the market that we service and that is anyone older than university students especially like graduating students first time buyers yeah um parents looking to fit out their spare bedrooms batches that sort of thing awesome yeah yeah yeah, totally yeah cool one thing that um in the early days uh, where the there was sort of not, not, not conflict but where it was sort of difficult for us the challenge was we both had the same goal. We wanted to grow the business as big as we could. And you know, there's steps to do that and there's different projects that have to be um, undertaken. And we'd both try and do them and we're both quite different. And so therefore we're doing them very differently. Yes. And there's a whole thing where, um, you know, if two people, you know, especially if there's two, you know, um, uh, what's the word, two like good people trying to achieve the same thing, yeah. but both people have different ideas, you know, they potentially are both really good ideas, but it's trying to figure out who was the best idea. Mm. Um, and what we've got to now is the whole thing is like, you know, if there's two people ha- having that conflict, you know, wouldn't you love to know if you're wrong, mm-hmm. you know, and trying to be- understand which is the better way to do it. And that was that whole like Myers Briggs thing that we've done recently. Yeah. Um, so yeah, kind of sticking to sticking to the things that we're good at. Yeah. Has been a big move recently. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. cool. What advice would you give to? friends that are um, yeah. in uni and going I've got a cool idea let's work together specifically on that work together piece yeah. is there any advice that you'd give these 
these young young yeah. guys. The, I mean, else, I, I, I think just just diving in and actually like so many people just talk about it. Eh? Yeah. Like we've we've got mates that just talk about it. Yeah. Um, and it's a massive step to go and actually do it, to do and it. then do it for you know for a long period. Mm. It's like you can easily just fizzle out and and throw on the towel. Yeah. Um, but if you can, especially at uni, when you've got no other responsibility, mm. you're being paid. You know, you're you've got a student loan coming in, like you don't have to fund that. You've yeah. got you've got a great opportunity where you don't have to fund your lifestyle like it's already funded for you in a way mm. you're just a poor student mm. and any money you can just put into growing something is like that's great you know yeah. and then come out of uni and now you've got this thing on the side which could become your full-time thing yeah but i think it's just that just starting yeah like, just starting. yeah that's, start. that's sort of the first part and I, I guess there's like we see it like a window of opportunity right when you're at university what cam's talking about without any risk to start mm -hmm. so it's trying to start as early as you can yeah and then if there's anything which um we were fortunate enough to achieve is when you graduate you want the business to be able to support you full time yeah, wow. and not like not on extravagant lifestyle or anything like that what's the bare minimum if you can if the business can support you therefore you can give all of your time to getting it to the next step and to the next step and the next step. maybe yeah. for a bit of context yeah. in our journey as well you know in, in regards to that if we were a year later, we would have had to go and get a job. Yeah. And then the growth would have been pushed out by two or three years. Mm. And even at this point, we may not be full time. Mm. So it's like the, the earlier you, you get started, the, you know, that's classic compounding interest. Like yeah, yeah. the earlier you get started, the, the quicker you start moving. And like hopefully by the end of university, it's like cool. Yeah. This thing's like on its feet now. I can support a, a minimal lifestyle and then go and just go and attack it. Yeah, yeah so cool. for sure. And then moving just to what you were talking about before, like the dynamics working together. Yeah. Um, I think it's about understanding what where the people where people's strengths are and playing to the strengths. Mm -hmm. One thing that's come out of I keep going back to this book, but it's it's out of this book Ray Dalio, the principal's book. Is one thing that he did was got everyone to do the Myers Briggs test and created um, you know baseball card type things for each employee. Mm -hmm. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And when a project would come into the business he'd only get the people whose strengths it was to, to take on that project or yeah. the most important parts awesome. um, and not like the person who's been there the longest mm. or the boss or like you know, minimal hierarchy no just, hierarchy just yeah. whoever's the best gets that project awesome. and I think that's really would be really important in those early days and I think if we could go back to those early days that's something that we would focus on and we're really focused on it now is understanding you know, what's Cam really good at and what's Angus really good at let's just focus on those things mm -hmm. otherwise you end up doing projects that you're not good at um, where the other person's really good at and what you and, don't enjoy you know? yeah, and what you don't enjoy yeah true. for sure yeah yeah that's yeah. work becomes a lot more more meaningful yeah yeah, yeah. For, yes. for example Gus can stand up in front of three or four hundred people you know in front of a hall and have them all like you know on the ground cracking up at something and I'm sitting up shaking you know like, <laughs> like, yeah. like Gus mate you take it you take it <laughs> yeah. 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 and like yeah. which I love which I love doing like I love I, I love going to the office putting my headphones on and just yeah. smashing up so. Cam's one of those guys yeah. that can yeah. like just have a list in front of them and just lock in and mm -hmm. just nail every task and sort of like not stop for lunch you know wow. and I you know I, just, I can't do that you know <laughs> I, I've got to stand up for like half an hour at lunch and go and socialise with people otherwise yeah. I'm literally just gonna like burn out by the end of the day sort yeah. of thing but where it says the shit needs to get so yeah. you know, no. stuff needs to get done you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cam's, Cam's doing it you know, yeah so totally it's, 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 it's great like, I've worked out the, the two sides yeah. now okay. there you go great yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no very cool and both are so needed so yeah. really cool that you guys have just gelled and worked out what works for you in this journey like what has your family and friends said like, like you left uni and let me get this right like you you are now full time in this um, and have been since uni correct yeah so like that's not as common yeah. which is mm -hmm. awesome mm -hmm. because you guys are leading the way in this what do your family and friends have said what have they said um, yeah. on the, the family side I think could probably speak for both of us super supportive yeah. that's the biggest thing um, a little side note or sort of anecdotally we just had a Christmas party yeah. and um, we both invited our parents to cool. the Christmas party yeah, and they loved and, it and they absolutely loved it they you know? were yeah, yeah. so cool so it was the, the staff um, a, co a couple of really key contractors that we work with like really closely yeah. um, so it was about 12 uh, there was about 10 people Four there actually. Four, yeah. including yeah. parents yeah. Including, yeah. and then yeah and then cool. um, um, four parents yeah, yeah so cool so yeah that I guess a testament to sort of how supportive they've been and yeah. like just you know behind us the whole way which mm. is really it was really cool yeah yeah I love that nice and then the friend side um, friends have been yeah 
Uh, really good. Mm. Like, really good. Yeah, I'd say, like, our close mates are uh, super supportive. Yeah. Um, I probably have a few, like, distant mates that just go, uh, how have you done that? You know, yeah, and I think, yeah. I think it's a, like, going to the US, it's like, it seems like a massive task, but you just sort of work through the process and just do it you know yeah, like yeah. get the visa sorted sweet yeah go to the u.s and like do some research sweet you yeah, know like yeah. yeah it's not i mean it's hard but it's not it's not that hard you just you just do, do it yeah you know? yeah and, and it comes back to what you said around starting so early that you don't have uh you know the extra layer of responsibility yeah. and i think our naivety down. has played into oh, our hands mass, yeah massive quite a lot, yeah. yeah one really good um a quote that we heard that someone said to us recently is that whole you know how do you eat an elephant have mm-hmm. you heard that yes. one bite at a time and I think that really resonated with what we've done as Cam just said you know people look at you know go to the US and sort of go and set up at two universities and sort of fi- in a five week period which mm-hmm. is what we've just done um, I think people can look at it and go wow that's you know such a big task and just not not see the process or not yeah. figure out the pieces whereas when we see it it's just like okay well what's step one let's just do that and then if it takes two days then on the Wednesday what's step two step three step four yeah. and within like we did it within about two months right from having the idea of going to the US to researching um, we sort of built this model that modeled about 75 universities across the US yeah. um, we interviewed about 30 people in the US virtually um, and then we got on a flight and landed in the US and rented a car and booked a couple of hotels and stayed in the US and set up at two universities yeah yeah. So I guess like that being said it's not easy you yeah know? It's by no means is easy but it's just yeah. understanding that it is just a process yeah and you just gotta just you work just through it have it. a framework and just just do it yeah, yeah. Uh, like yeah the market over there would be massive like unis mm-hmm. is massive like yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, little bit of con- like a little bit of context on the scale which we're talking about it's mm. um it is massive yeah. you know our biggest market is Otago it works really well for what we're trying to achieve um you know there's 20,000 people at Otago mm-hmm. um you know that we went and set up at two of the smaller universities before we go on to the big ones over there um both of those universities are 30,000 um they're looking the opportunity looks better than Otago and they're like an hour and a half away from each other yeah. so you're kind of like 60,000 people you know is one of the smallest places we're starting yeah. um, I mean some of the unis are like yeah. some of the unis have 60 or 70 thousand students alone at one university it's like yeah. insane yeah mm. guys this is yeah. awesome so yeah yeah I'm so pumped for you guys <laughs> um, what's been the biggest learning on the journey um, or something you may have done different if you could do it again I think we've learnt a lot in the last six months yeah. uh, around the, the mindset thing like this book um mm. a few key or one key consultant has just just changed the way we look at things and really learned to work on the business rather than it. like how do we remove ourselves from any day-to-day task so that we can just go after growth mm. um, and it just sort of yeah it just sort of elevates the journey and like increases the speed in which we can which we can grow yeah um, awesome. yeah, yeah that's so good yeah i completely agree um probably playing to people's strengths as we keep talking about as well now that we've got staff um how do you apply what we're just talking about you know between cam and i to a team of you know six four four other people yeah. um and giving them the, the space to grow and, and be really successful in their space mm-hmm. um has been a big learning thing for us recently as well yeah i mean that being said like we spent the first three years just gus and i doing everything yeah, yeah. we learned everything mm-hmm. like and we didn't even like we didn't have the budget to go and contract things out. Mm-hmm. It's only recently has this sort of started to happen, and, and now at this point, it's like now you can start going a lot quicker because mm-hmm. we're not required to do these things. You know, you can implement a process, and, and someone else can go and execute. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah, the early days for sure were not <laughs> like glamorous at all. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like we're trying That's to get totally. out. It was a ninety corona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Both, exactly. both trying to do a finance and accounting yeah. degree, which we both finished, you know, yeah, at, yeah. at the same time, awesome. like trying to do it, trying to be, like live on, you know, do the Castle Street, you know, sort of sort of thing mm-hmm. um, down in Otago. It was, you know, all over the place sort of thing. But yeah. um, you, you did right, Cam, in the last six months, we've kind of, I feel like we've just sort of elevated above where we were sort of stuck on that, like, you know, ground zero, just grinding it out yeah. and being able to, okay, like there's actually... Probably uh, learning to, to pull the big levers yeah. is an analogy we use and yeah. just like prioritizing the big things mm-hmm. and then going and doing that yeah. and then very quickly you start moving you know a lot quicker yeah awesome. um, which, which we've probably found yeah for sure there's kind of that that mindset of you know lots of people want to go and do 10 different things they get like with that use um, a marketing example say they want to go to tiktok instagram mm-hmm. you know facebook youtube xyz you know but 
you know, you're a lot better to go and just nail like digital marketing, for example, than try and like also grow your TikTok account and also grow your Instagram account and also, yeah. you know, do yeah. this and have influencers and all this sort of stuff. And it's real, it's identifying or putting value to each one of those things going for after the, what's the number one priority what's the biggest lever mm -hmm. and just pulling that as hard as you can yeah. and just saying like we're not do we don't do TikTok yeah, you know yeah, and it's like yeah. oh well, you know, there's a lot of noise around you know, you can imagine you know, yes, why aren't you on TikTok absolutely. why aren't you growing yeah, yeah, you've got to get on TikTok you've got to get on TikTok you've got to be doing that it's like you guys are a university brand you've got to be on TikTok yeah. it's like well we don't do TikTok yeah, you know yeah. like we're at, the, at this stage yes. like we're, we're, we're smashing our ads account yeah. you know and that's what we're doing yeah because yeah. otherwise you just do everything really average exactly yeah. Yeah. you better yeah. do something give like 100% and then like 10% on 10 things yeah yeah so true yeah. yeah and also your website your design it looks really great I love it I yeah. love it so easy to use I was like trying to think of a bed frame I could replace <laughs> in my house I was oh, yeah. like no, you know I was like these are so cool yeah. come on yeah. well, um, one yeah. other um, piece of I guess like a bit of a golden nugget I, I we would both think that we've come across recently is this whole freelancer model mm. so especially after COVID a lot of very skilled people in New Zealand and overseas but the growth has really happened in New Zealand a lot of skilled people have left um, businesses yeah. and as, a, as the marketing manager or as the full-time designer and gone out on their own yeah. um, and it's this whole you know it's the, the, the great resign that was called in the mm. US after COVID people wanting to step back and like be at home with their families yes. and the, the ability to work virtually yes. is, is, is the really yeah. the big thing yes. um, yeah. there's a, a platform in New Zealand called Unicorn Factory um, mm -hmm. where a lot of these freelancers are listed um, and the big international one that we, we use is Upwork mm -hmm. um, and really it's the, the beauty of it is instead of hiring a full time designer mm -hmm. you can just use uh, and you might you know let's say you've got 100k on salary to spend on a designer um, that's going to be you know rank them sort of 5 or 6 out of 10 um, you can use that 100k annual budget on, on a sort of 8, 9 out of 10 and just use them periodically mm -hmm. and use them when really hard and fast when you need them yeah. um, and then you've then what you can do is instead of having you know 100k tied up in your, that salary and someone else in the office XYZ mm -hmm. and being an overhead as well yes. being, like, what I'm saying is being uh, an overhead yeah. Yeah. You, can, you can use four freelancers every year yeah. you know really skilled freelancers a designer uh, you know photography someone on a specialist on ads account you know yeah. whatever I mean that's just at our point as well that being said like you know in five years time we might be saying the story might be a bit different yeah. oh yeah, yeah we're spending 200k on a bloody you know yeah. um, free, like, yeah, free life photographer it makes sense to bring them in house but yeah, yeah. In, you know in these early days I think that's the natural progression and what we've sort of realised is if we can just keep our team like nice and tight and core mm -hmm. like have a core team who have you know a great ability to manage these freelancers mm -hmm. then like that sort of that's what we're going through right now. Mm -hmm. That's what the next two or three years will look like. Yeah, awesome, guys. That's so cool. Oh, I've got so many ways I could take this conversation. <laughs> it's really awesome. Yeah, any any misconceptions about your business or industry that you'd like to develop? Uh, yeah, I've, uh, we've probably both think the same thing here. <laughs> but social media has always been a misconception for us until the last of the six months. Like, mm -hmm. we always thought that's one of the key drivers to our business you know being like online in the university space it's like social media organic social media like tiktok yep. instagram facebook you know that's that's the bees knees that's where we need to sort of get to and, and grow those organic accounts yeah. what we've realized is like it doesn't really push the needle very much mm. if any at all for us at the moment yeah and that digital marketing and ads are a much bigger driver a bigger lever yeah. Um, so we actually spend at the moment spend very minimal time on social media mm. although people might look at that and go like oh that's so good at social media mm. you know it's like we're not we're not really we've sort of figured out a way that we can not allocate like sort of allocate minimal budget to social media yeah. spend a lot more resource the time is a big one time and also obviously um, capital on on ads mm. um, but sort of have this like social media presence that's enough to sort of just keep ticking on yeah mm. um, and that, that's yeah. very like situational for us yeah and that's um, right now it might change in a couple totally, of years totally. yeah. yeah we feel yeah. like if you want to smash social media you need to put a lot of resource into it yeah it's kind of long story short yeah. and yeah. I mean there's a few great examples of that like girls get off would be one yeah. um, totally. local business yeah uh, they've like done unbelievable things without a single dollar spent on ads. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas we're probably very the ads, opposite right? end yeah. of the spectrum. Yeah. Well, the ads got me, guys, because when I was researching <laughs> for this, yeah. um, I was doing that, and then I was scrolling socials, the uh, you know that <laughs> night, and I was like, oh, here they are. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's working now. It's very, very cool. Um, how do you guys celebrate success along the way? 
It's something that we've definitely learned to do a lot better recently. Yeah. Um, I'd say we sort of went through a quite a long period where we didn't celebrate a lot of success. We just just, just keep going, yeah. just keep going, keep going. Yeah. Um, and then when we have recently started hitting a few of these milestones um, that we'd sort of set, and then once we've reached them, we sort of celebrate them. So, um, I mean, it's, it can be the most simplest way of you know going, literally going out for dinner and a few beers, you know, yeah. and that's it, it. Just has to be celebrated. I think is the, is what, the main point. It, yeah. Even as little as like taking half an hour in the morning to go for a coffee and yeah. knowing that that's half an hour out of your, out of your day, but that, that's fine, you know. Mm. It's like yeah, take yeah. time for yourself. Yeah, or awesome. together. Yeah, I think it's just the the biggest learning about, around celebrating success is set, once you've set that KPI, once you've set that target or that goal or whatever it can, whatever it be, and it can be you know financial, it can be something you know super intrinsic like total amount of customers that have got five star reviews of the month you know yes. whatever it's going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. yeah once you hit it it's like recognizing it's like tools down let's celebrate awesome. you know and as cam said it can just be a coffee or it can be a dinner mm. it can be you know whatever yeah but it's just the, the fact of once you hit it you have to recognize that you've done it yeah cool otherwise it's like five years down the track and you're like we've done some yeah. cool things but we've never stopped to put yeah. ourselves on the back exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah that's really cool I like that I want to talk just a little bit about your guys Ice House experience and how you've come into the fold of this community yeah um, oh congrats by the way I should have I should have researched this a bit more but you guys have just won an award oh is that yes, right thank you yeah. tell me a little bit more about that what yeah. was that award so we've just had the um, Total on the Business Awards uh, yes. last or two weeks ago um, and yeah we were fortunate enough to win the emergency business award here in Tauranga so awesome. it's I guess it's upcoming businesses that um, uh, are focused on you know there was a few categories like marketing innovation customer experience yeah. you know that sort of thing so yeah no great testament to um, what we've achieved but also uh, a really exciting part is that we've moved to the Mount for lifestyle mm. being very selective over that and mm. to come here and sort of be recognized in Tauranga as well is pretty cool yeah. for us yeah, awesome guys. Congratulations. Yes, yeah. I saw your guys' name pop up and I was like, yes, yeah. awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Company. And, um, but yeah, I want to hear a little bit about uh, how that came about, how the Ice House coaching with Kevin came about and how you guys have found that experience. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so we were we were at this point and it was about, it was we, going back to what Cam was saying before, where we were working remotely. Yes. And Cam said there was a few challenges with that. And to be honest, there was some big challenges with that. Mm-hmm. Um, we were not sure on the direction of the business was probably the biggest one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we weren't in the same place to collaborate on that. Mm-hmm. And looking back, we should have been in the same place to collaborate on that. And once we came... We weren't working very effectively. Yeah, we weren't working very effectively. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we were sort of like, we'd had all the success, you know, three years on, things were going really well, but we were in this awkward position where we didn't know where we were taking it yeah. we didn't know what the next steps were um, and everyone was sort of going you know congrats like you guys are doing so well you know X, Y, Z and we were sitting here like maybe plateauing a little bit yeah you know, just like, sort of yeah, yeah. we're not sure what what is next yeah, yeah totally yeah. and yeah. so it was this whole re- like more like just reaching out for help was the mm. biggest thing so um my uncle was sort of just uh, linked with Ice House um, and he actually sent me, at the time, sent me this uh, LinkedIn uh, article about Ice House that there's, you know, coaching available. He didn't know the position this behind the scenes at all. Right. It was just super random and I just clicked on the link, went on, and then I just had this sort of uh, like our moment yeah. you know that maybe this is what we're looking for cool. um, and then reached out to you yeah, reached out to Ice House got uh, an account manager mm-hmm. um, and then who linked us up with Kevin you know very quickly mm-hmm. um, and we had our first session probably you know three weeks later four weeks later with Kevin mm-hmm. um, and it was just epic awesome. you know, just so so good we we drove up to Auckland oh good um, yeah, yeah yeah we and this was recently after I just moved we just sort of moved up to, together, yeah. uh, we locked into with a room in a room with Kevin. Mm. Uh, made us a couple of coffees. <laughs> uh, we still laugh at this. He's a bit of a like a bit of a whiz on the yeah. on the coffee machine up right, in, yeah. on, the, on the Auckland Ice yeah, 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 great barista. Yeah, great um, barista. Yeah, we just locked in for well over an hour. We probably booked in for an hour session, mm. maybe two hour session. He ended up giving us like three and a half hours of his time. Awesome. Um, just nearly missed our flight. Nearly missed out. Yeah. We did. We nearly missed our flight afterwards. We we were oh, no. almost in the mindset of like the gosh the. Flight doesn't matter, you yeah, know. Like, just well, cancel that. Yeah. This is we need this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was it was awesome. Um, and from then on, we've had multiple sessions with Kevin. Yeah. Um, we even you know get to the point now where we were driving to um, Auckland Airport on the way to the US, mm-hmm. fa- FaceTiming him. You know, he's awesome. giving us like tips and tricks. But yeah. like, oh, you know, before you get on the flight, think about this when you're flight. Uh, yeah. You know, when you get to the US, ring me, and we like you know call yeah. him when we're in the US. So, cool. um, so he's really you know like, involved with, with the steps that we're we're taking. 
taking now. Yeah, and maybe a little bit more informal now. Like yeah. we can just have a chat, you know, yeah. it's just half an hour here and there. Whereas mm. early days it was like, yeah, two or three hour sessions. And yeah. 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 I his, think well, I mean, his background is awesome as well. He's sort of banged through it. And I think both Gus and I respect what he's done. And like, he's had a big, a reasonably big exit. Yeah. And that's sort of what we're sort of, well, that's the track we're going down. Yeah. Um, so to, yeah, to be consulted by someone who's been there, done that is just. Mm-hmm. In a really yeah. similar line of business as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Probably find him quite. Like quite practical yeah yeah he's so cool eh? yeah he's a really great good guy yeah, yeah one so of good. the best things for us i think one well, of the most valuable things for us early days was coming to him going look we've you know had the success you know we don't know where the direction is mm. and him going okay you know you're sort of really stuck in this like tunnel vision guys like mm. what, what are the actual steps that you need to take to get to where you want to go well let's identify what you want need to do and then let's just lay the steps out awesome. putting numbers we were just you know what big whiteboard session mm. um, how many beds you need, how many mattresses do you need to sell how many bed frames do you need to sell you know per year per yeah. month per week per day you know and then it becomes like okay like we can, you know, we can do this like, this yeah. is good and sort of since then we go and go into the whole you know elephant analogy and we sort of have used that framework for a lot of the stuff that we use so mm. yeah it's really helped us progress through um, a lot of other areas of the business as well when Kevin you know, isn't there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, guys, so cool. Did you have any hesitations with the coaching idea? Like, or were you guys all in once you saw it? It sounds like it was in a bit of an aha moment. And you're all I think like, I think we're all in a. We yeah. actually were fortunate to have a bit of funding for that too. Cool. Um, yeah. Through the chamber here, total yeah. chamber of business. Yeah. Um, so it was awesome to to sort of receive that, and that sort of helped with yeah. any hesitation at all not yeah. that there was any yeah for yeah. sure no that's cool um let's talk about what's next for you guys first of all i kind of just want to paint the scene like when when you guys decided you were moving to the u.s was it like a sit down meeting with your team being like who's coming with us mm-hmm. or like what did that look like nah. or was it slow <laughs> slow good combos individually because that's a big move yeah um i really started with uh, another consultant we brought on who yeah. We sort of laid out where we would got to at this point. What are the next? What are the big levers that we could pull? And he said, "Look, you guys, you guys got the student model. It's working so well here. Mm-hmm. What other regions in the world would this work?" Um, initially, we looked at Australia, and very quickly sort of put a, a cross through that. Mm-hmm. Um, just a few fundamentals aren't quite right for for our model there. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we looked at the US and realised that there's you know massive college campuses or college towns as they call it, mm-hmm. um, and so I built this financial model and, and sort of went, okay, that's that's sort of next. Um, we actually didn't decide we're going to move there until our recent trip. So we've just spent five weeks in Kansas. Yeah. And it wasn't until we've, we've sort of come back from there going, this is all go, guys. Let's, yeah. let's do it. Cool. Um, so the, the strategy behind bringing four of us over there is... First year, we're going to be at two universities. Mm-hmm. If we can, well, we will. I'm, I'm confident we're going to figure it out. Yeah. When we figure that out, it's like, how quick can you go? Mm-hmm. The model, our model doesn't require, uh, requires very little external capital mm-hmm. um, to, to continue growing. So as long as we've got the team to manage the people and as long as we can get the people in place, we can go as quick as we, as quick as we can. Mm-hmm. So it would probably look like going from one state to five to 10 to 20. Mm-hmm. And the more people we have in our sort of centralized core team that understand the model um, and understand how to execute the better so yeah. the idea behind bringing four of us over there is that the four of us are upskilled uh, and when it's time to go we're we're all go mm. it was more of a yeah it's like a it's very um, forward thinking approach where we brought these you know two other people on recently and all they're doing at the moment well the majority of the work at the moment is learning how the New Zealand model works mm. so that when in a year's time once Cam and I have executed on the US we're not sitting here going being the only ones that can execute yes. we need yeah. to start bringing people in at least a year in advance mm. train them up so that when it's all go we've got double the team you know yeah. to go from two to four and then at that time we'll also be training more people go from, from four to eight and then sort of like once we hit about eight we're sort of forecasting in the US that we should be able to manage you know 20, 20 states or 20 universities um, to 20 to 25 universities I guess it's like that fine line between maximising what we can do right now without falling over if things don't go to plan you know yeah. like we've got a plan B and if things don't work out in the US, that's fine. We can come out to the New Zealand market and continue mm. really growing that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What's so cool about this is it's like it's scalable, but without what what it sounds like, without massive need for capital, like investment, that's, external. That's, that's investment. Exactly. So yeah, Gus, yeah. And, Gus and I still own 100% of the company. That's 50, amazing. 50. We don't mm. have any debt at this stage. Mm. Um, wow. We don't plan on 
on raising any capital or yeah. giving away any, any equity at this point, but that may change down the line. Mm. Um, but yes, yeah, that's just, that's been really cool to do it ourselves. You know? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing that happened was we, we started this business with $5,000 each, um, and that's mm. the only money that's been introduced into the company right from day one. Most yeah. of that which came from the second hand bids. Yeah, yeah it came yeah, from the second hand bids that we yeah, sold. Yeah. Um, and when we were in that position, you know, we could see how big the market was, you know, at the time we were looking at Otago, Christchurch, Wellington, Auckland mm. University going, look, there's, you know, thousands of students here to service. We only have $10,000 to spend. We're sort of this whole situation of being backed into a corner and just trying to really think out the bo- outside the box, mm. but come up, come up with really creative ideas with how to scale a business without any capital mm. um, and at the time you know we didn't know we were doing this you know it was just the only option that we just had just seemed, seemed like the logical thing to do yeah, yeah. but yeah, looking yeah. back it was actually very fortunate that we didn't have $100,000 to spend mm. because what we've built is really scalable models mm. um, really scalable systems and processes and we've just tripled down on the things that worked and when they work we just um, you know, just scale them as quickly as we can. Maybe to, just to, to tie that back to advice we'd give to yeah. other university students or our yeah. mates back at university, it's like everyone has the excuse that they don't have the money to mm. start the business. Mm. There are ways around that and that, that shouldn't be the excuse mm. because there are, you know, um, ways to fund the business through without giving away equity as well and without taking on debt. Mm. Uh, there are grants, etc., etc. et cetera, um, or there are ways to build out a business which isn't capital intensive yeah um and i mean most furniture businesses are super capital intensive Mm -hmm. especially nowadays with um long manufacturing times like the capital tied up in furniture in in asia or on the water coming to new zealand is massive Mm -hmm. but we don't have that because we just thought outside the box yeah Yeah. and sort of along the way you know we We've never, because we had had no other capital injections along the way, we continue to build those scalable models. That was just the way we did things. Yeah. And now what's awesome is the multiple on those systems and processes is huge because we can take them to the US without needing to raise a million bucks. Yeah. And we can go over and we can execute on them because we've ironed them out here in New Zealand. We know how they work. Mm-hmm. We've but along the way, um, a good example, you know, a good analogy is building the plane while you fly it. Yeah. That's how we sort of approach how we approach it early days. A uh, really good example was we've built this back end that works only for the university model. It doesn't work for the regular market. It's, it supports university students going from um, you know halls of residence into flatting. Yeah. And you know it's when we had you know another five thousand dollars free, we'd build a little bit more, get our um, developer to build a little bit more. Another five thousand, build a little bit more. And now we're four years on with this like you know unreal back end that we can sort of take to the US mm. as, a, as a really good example yeah, yeah. Um, that has the capability to service you know thousands and thousands of students yeah. I love how scalable it is mm. like um, from a bootstrapping perspective yeah. it's pretty amazing to be honest mm. um, I'm going to wrap this up I feel mean asking this question but I'm going to do it anyway um, go, go for it <laughs> what scares you the most about the move to the USA I don't know if I, for me personally that's probably nothing that scares me as such yeah, uh, that's I cool. feel like Kiwis are loved over in the US like yeah. everyone loves the accent so it's not an issue about <laughs> it was a big asset for us <laughs> over the last five weeks <laughs> it's not an issue about like fitting into the culture because it's sort of a strange thing where you start speaking and someone just like falls in love with you yeah yeah I mean, not, not knowing you in any other regard totally. but maybe the biggest thing I'm going to miss more so than yes. I'm scared of is, is Tauranga like it's mm. it's such an awesome place I think I haven't been to any other part of the world which I go this is better than back home mm-hmm. um, and I yeah I, I will look forward to coming back here in whether it be five six seven years mm-hmm. um, when the US expansion is sort of done and dusted yeah um, and yeah yeah it's sort of growing or continuing to, to, to grow up here and yeah it's been my life here yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah, yeah. The, the funny thing about where we're going is we're going to the midwest mm-hmm. you know we're not going to the coasts we're going to the midwest it's the markets that sort of fit our model really well um, and the Midwest in particular is very different to New Zealand. Um, you know, we've just done, as I said, five weeks in Kansas and Missouri. Mm. Um, and we just, you know, you're thousands and thousands of miles from anywhere from a coast. You know, mm. there's no, different. there's no ocean where you are. Mm. Um, and being growing up, like, you know, a lot of surfing, et cetera, so that's probably the biggest, the biggest change. Mm. Um, we probably went three weeks without seeing any, 
uh, form of water in the US uh, when we were in Kansas um, and we came across this river and it was a kind of big river and it was the dirtiest you know yeah. and I just we just looked at it like oh my god like thank god you know mm. god for just I don't know why it just felt good you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> to see it again we're looking at this just dirty river in Kansas City you know yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah probably, probably the biggest thing is the um, what New Zealand like has to offer like mm. what the scenery is like what the yeah. lifestyle is like you know sort of thing for sure yeah, yeah. no for sure and, and like you said you know you've still got your whole lives in front of you and you don't know what oh, you end sure. up but a yeah. cool time in life to give something and go but you'll need to put in like a something every yeah, you know yeah. how often to like see some water and that's right yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's about yeah learning to just prioritize those other things and, and otherwise you know yeah for sure for, yeah i mean for example we so when we go to kansas we're spending sort of three months on the ground yeah. and then spending a bit of time in portugal just working virtually but we've got a sort of period where we have the ability to work from anywhere mm. um, so you know prioritizing going and seeing part of the world and, yeah. and having a bit of fun as well living your life yeah. yeah that's so exciting guys yeah. i um one day want to do like a follow-up to this recording because how <laughs> cool that this i think this will um go live maybe the week before you guys head off and i think that's so exciting you know to the listeners tuning in um these guys are definitely ones to watch so um i feel really honored to be able to have this chat in such an exciting time of life for you guys oh, thank you. um so thanks heaps for being on the podcast and we'll keep in touch we're backing you all the way here at the ice house 100 percent. thank you very much yeah mm-hmm. appreciate your time and yeah appreciate what the ice house has um, done for us as well thank yeah, you it's been awesome